thing 3d printed that okay i think i'm ready to go welcome back to another bit now i'm just gonna get into it too much get this guy filming as well this is a not quite fully maxed out 2015 15 inch macbook pro and this took me from earning i think eight thousand pounds my the first year that i got this to up until last year, where I broke my arm and hardly earned anything again. Uh, so uh, maybe that's not, not a good place to start. But basically this took me from the MacBook Air that I had, that I was, I was editing on. I was editing on a MacBook Air, a 13 inch one from like 2012. In fact, It's still here. Yeah, 2012 MacBook Air. I like this computer a lot. I think that for what I was doing at the time, I was editing like C1, Canon C100 stuff with this. It was great. What? I got a Mavic, what was it called? Mavic Pro, I think it was called. The first like fold-in drone. I got that and that MacBook Air just couldn't handle it. And it would take so long to make proxies that I I lost my mind and I ended up buying this thing. And this thing, when I got it, was like crazy. It felt crazy overpowered. The thing is, I still use it because the Hasselblad needs Firewire, which obviously modern Macs don't have. You can adapt it to Thunderbolt 2. You can technically adapt it to Thunderbolt 3, but it won't work. The computer will see the camera, but it won't like do anything with it but you can adapt it seamlessly to Thunderbolt 2 and this has Thunderbolt 2 it also is currently running not the latest Mac OS but Ventura uh, with open core legacy patcher and I still use this a lot because I like the bigger screen I don't like carrying around a bigger screen I prefer the the 14 inch I think that's a almost perfect laptop but sometimes when I'm at home I prefer the screen on this I know it's not much bigger, but it feels bigger. I don't know why, it just does. So I, I I was using it this evening, all this evening. Also really love the keyboard on this. This is my favorite keyboard of any laptop I've ever used. I actually briefly, and I made a load of videos on about it, I briefly moved over to using like a, a PC that I built myself. And this was like, this is going out the window then. And then this came back in and I ended up using this again until I bought a Mac Studio, which I just sold yesterday because I literally haven't used it in months. What is all this to say? Well, all this is to say that I actually genuinely think you could use this computer for video editing now, still. Like if you picked up one of these for like, I don't know how much they are, but a couple hundred quid, and you just needed something to edit together a video like this. Could you do it? Now, I'm, I'm gonna be editing files from the Sony a7S III, which is what I'm filming this on. So I thought I'd throw in a couple of other cameras. I've got this, the little Sony action camera that I really like for some reason. I've got the Insta360 ONE X, which is a 360 camera. I've got the Insta360 GO 3S, uh, which is a little tiny action cam. I've got the footage from my, my phone, the iPhone footage, only like 11 Pro. And I'm gonna try and use all that so the Insta360 stuff has to go through their studio app. That works on this, obviously. Might take a little bit longer to put it together. What I've done with the with the A7S is I've, I usually film these in HD anyway, but I've gone into the all I codec, which means that I can then just edit faster without creating proxies on this because it's easier on the computer. Oh, Let's see if I can put this together. I'm going to be using DaVinci Resolve. I do use like a lot of the studio stuff for color grading. Um, so, and Fairlight. 
I think. Some of the stuff's like studio exclusive. So I've installed that on here. I think it'll, I think I've got, you get two licenses. You get two like, two seats with each license, I think. So that should work. And I'm rambling now, so I might as well basically just making some footage for myself. Yeah, I'm gonna get into it and see if I melt this computer or if it's fine. Okay, first issue with this is the Insta360 just like keeps disconnecting. Okay, so, I uh, don't again. This is taking so long. And also, can you hear the fans? Them fans are loud. Well, not, not loud. It's louder than, louder than ones I never hear in my other laptop. That usually goes at like 11 times. So that's slower, for sure. This usually goes a lot faster. <laughs> Tonight might be a late one. The battery's like almost fully drained, even though it's been plugged in the whole time, because the charger blew up for it last year. And so I'm using the charger from the MacBook Air, which is not powerful enough to charge it while you're using it. So it like drains as you're using it. It's not necessarily a problem with the computer, it's a problem with the fact that I've not got a powerful and charger but still it's a problem with this situation. I'm gonna make myself a brew though. I have a tea while it charges a bit. One of the issues is a playback you can scrub about just fine. You can play it back as long as you don't have any effects on it. As soon as you put them on it grinds to like a six frame per second halt. Which is not conducive to editing. So what, if anything, have I learned from this endeavor? What it's pointed out is that if I needed to, I could go back to this laptop. If my current one got stolen, if something happened to it, I could pick back up from this. Ideally, create some proxies overnight, like film something, proxies, edit. I think you'd be fine. It's not great, but I think we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to have like the latest thing, because it's, it genuinely does speed up your workflow. Having been doing these daily videos, I've come to rely on like how fast that, you know, that MacBook, and I'm not talking about the newest one, I'm talking about the M1, uh, M1 Pro, I think it is, works so much better than, than this old computer. Just being able to play through it with the graphics on it, with the effects on it, that kind of thing. Not having to wait for an hour for that 360 footage to render out. Having the transcription of the audio just be like so fast. They're all nice to have, but then you can get it done on this. Maybe, you know, if I was start, like honestly, I feel like if I was starting out, I would, if I was starting out again, I would buy an older laptop, probably not one of these, but like an M1 MacBook Air, you, know, you can get for a few hundred quid. I'd buy something like, maybe something like a C100, like two C100s, some lights, some like decent lights, spend the money on the lights, the grip and stuff that goes with it and the audio stuff. And for probably less than like a, a newish camera body, you'd have like an amazing setup. You could make some great work with it and you'd quite quickly turn around enough work probably to upgrade your stuff. But you'd have a great like base to work from. See you tomorrow.